for it. <laughs> Hello, biologists. Today, we are going to talk to you briefly about how to make an insect collection to demonstrate your understanding of the science of taxonomy. <laughs> we are going to be uh, just having a lot of fun making these insects bo insect box collections. We are going. You're going to need a plastic jar, something like a big peanut butter jar, something that's going to be not a teeny ween, teeny weeny one, sort of a, a medium sized plastic jar with a good lid. A shoe box, a hinge top is just great, or you don't have to have a hinge top, um, and something that you're going to use uh, on the bottom to hold your collection. So you'll end up seeing a bunch of. Shoe boxes stacked around the classroom as the next couple weeks go on. These are to protect your insect collection as you're building it. And a lot of them will look, look the same, so you might want to label yours with your name. Before we go any further, we need to review the anatomy of an insect. We know an insect by the fact that it has three body regions, a head, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And what and else? Most importantly, that it has six legs, not eight, six, not four. Yes, yeah, six paired legs. They will also have antennae, and most of them will have wings. There will be eight common insect orders that you will most likely collect um, during the time that we are building your collection. The first and most common is Orthoptera. And we wanna talk a little bit about where each of these orders should be pinned when you're building your collection. Orthoptera, your grasshoppers and crickets, walking sticks, praying mantis, they're all pinned directly in the thorax. And you can see right where this pin is going through the almost thorax. Looks, almost looks like it's between the shoulder blades if it yeah. had shoulder blades, but it doesn't. Uh, a coleoptera is any type of beetle. You'll, uh, this is a lady beetle or a ladybug. And the pinning of a coleoptera always happens uh, right to the side of the line that goes down the back. You need to go through that leathery wing that is the, the where the, the wings meet, that's the line down the back. You want to go through that leathery wing. That'll hold that pin. Lepidoptera, your moths and butterflies, there are a couple special things to know about them. First, they are pinned through the thorax, and then oftentimes you'll want to spread out their wings like you see in these two um, examples. The, this, these students have used pieces of paper to help dry the wings out flat. Yeah, you want to do that pretty much right after, mm -hmm. as soon as you can after you've caught that insect because those, those wings will sort of dry up, folded up, if you don't get them pinned, uh, pressed out. And notice that the, the pins holding the paper to spread out the wings, those pins do not go through the wings themselves. They're just going through the styrofoam or cardboard mm -hmm. um, so that those wings stay nice and intact and as perfect as possible. Mostly, make sure you get through the thorax, because if it ends up in the abdomen, that will sort of dry up and it'll fall apart. Yeah. Odonatas are beautiful dragonflies and damselflies, and again, right through the thorax. Here's another example of a long abdomen. Some people call it their tail, but that's really sort of a gushy abdomen. It will dry up, and you will not that will not support that insect. We don't don't typically uh, press out or pin out the wings of dragonflies and damselflies. They seem to sort of stay um, extended anyway, or just as they dry. And then your hemiptera. Your hemiptera and homoptera have um, the, their X on their back. The wings meet in an X and fold over in their back. So you're going to want to pin hemiptera right in the top quadrant of so that X. Here is the X, and the pin is right above it. Oh, it's hard to see here, but there's a little X on, this X on the cicada, and it's right above the X. Perfect. Again, that's sort of through the thorax. Then. Yeah. Ooh, homopteras are so small. And so, so what we have to do with them is we put them on a little cardboard paper, like an index card. And uh, they, they call it put, uh, mounting them on a paper point. That way you can glue the insect onto a paper and then put the pin through the, the, that paper point so that it can still be elevated above the, the surface of your collection. Something important to note about homoptera is just in the last couple of years, scientists have um, placed homopterans in a suborder of hemiptera. And so you'll see that in a couple of different locations, depending on the key that you're using to um, identify your insect. Some will say that they're hemiptera, some will say homoptera, and that's okay. Just check in with Mrs. Beniski and Mrs. Detman, um, myself, about what you should do for labeling their order. 
And then the diptera, the flies, mosquitoes, and gnats, you tell, we can tell they're diptera because uh, they have a one pair of wings. Di or bi means two, so a two-winged things thing is a diptera. Uh, and uh, you want to pin that again right through that thorax. And then your hymenoptera. These are your bees and your wasps and ants. These are very common insects, and again, they are pinned right in the thorax. I'm sure most of you will have at least an ant in your collection, and those do get pinned right in the thorax. And really, since we're doing this in, in September, we have lots and lots of hymenoptera available mm -hmm. to us. And uh, so make sure yours is fully dead before you pin it. <laughs> Sorry. So here's just an overview of the main um, orders that you'll be likely to collect. Note that every, almost everything is pinned right in the thorax except for your coleoptera. Again, a reminder to the right of that wing line. That's where the pin goes over the abdomen. And then your hemiptera right in the top of the X, the top quadrant of the X in those hemip uh, hemiptera. And the uh, every, um, every one of your insects needs to have a label. You need four things on that label. The common name, like moth, uh, fly, wasp, thing, and maybe if you can get a better name than that, that would be great, but common English names. The insect order, that would be your coleoptera, lepidoptera, hymenoptera, etc. Where you captured it, usually that's going to be here at Olson, either out by the lake or out by the pond. And then the date you captured it. You can either write these names and then the information you need to include or uh, you could just put the information but whatever you do your labels should be consistently produced and they should be very neat and well done yeah and you'll see that now in these final works that students Gorgeous. have donated to us beautiful i love these yeah they, they did are, great work oh look at that dragonfly yes Nymph. Oh, so awesome. you know, we do just love these, don't we? Yes. So we really, we love doing this project with you. And we hope that when you're done, that you can look and, and remember all the good times and the fun and what you learned while producing your insect collection.